one hit. They're off. I don't like the rock, but I'm digging steeple shimmy. A Ford's ain't my bag. I'd rather drive a Hemi. Going through the gears, don't give me none your lip. My favorite kind of shifter is a pistol grip. This time on Graveyard Cars, the Gran Torino is coming to the shop. That is Brett Torino, the owner of the most valuable Mopar to ever grace Graveyard Cars. The 1970 Hemi Coronet RT 4-speed convertible. This car, an ultra rare, one of two ever built, is now literally one of a kind. Stay tuned for every phase of the restoration and the dramatic reveal. But that's not all. Mark still needs to take the little dead wagon with its Ray Barton Hemi for a not to be missed road test. In Springfield, Oregon, Mark Warman, together with his skilled ghouls. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. Bring classic Mopar muscle cars back from the dead to look like they did the moment they left the factory floor. Because of the obvious threat, this station will remain on the air, day and night. What are all your sauce? Is those milk jugs? No, it's a, it's a little salt shaker, okay, lime, and tequila. Just, Brett's going to be here in a second. My dad had to leave to run a few errands today. Uh, conveniently, right when Brett was supposed to show up to pick up the car. So I went and chatted with Will and asked him what he thought we should do since my dad left. And he thought that we should go ahead and do the reveal without my dad. And I thought that that was actually a really good idea. My dad's always talking about, you know, us taking the initiative, filling shoes, whatever. So, so what could go wrong? Just text me, so you should be here. Any you all excited, Doug? I'm very excited. Put a lot of work in on that, didn't you? Yes, we did. Well, I did most of it. I did all the uh -huh. prep work. On you haven't car, been here. Is... You're still hungover from Little Creek. Really, Will? Really? I'm not, do I look drunk right now? I'm not drunk. <laughs> what did you do on the car? I did all the prep work. You did nothing. Oh, I that's did. right. You got it. I yeah. did. Remember, that's <laughs> when I was out there. Look who's oh, there. Come on. Okay, let's go. My dad's not back. He's fine. It's always great to see Brad. I'm glad he's here. I, he's, he's a huge part of what we do here. He's just an all around one of my favorite clients that we have. And he's just a great guy to build a car for. It's cold my out God. there. We thought we were going to have to freeze to death <laughs> out there. You know, I, I mean, like most people that have owned a car, you have a passion for one reason or another. I loved the design of this car. I love the color of this car. I love the way this car performed. And when I drove it, it just still drove as a beautiful car, even though it needed work. Where's the big guy? Yeah, that's right. The big guy? Big he, guy. Okay, so my dad had to run across town really quick. Uh, I think he had to grab a fart or something, but that's okay. We don't have to wait for him. We don't have to wait for him. We can go out. You guys have waited long enough, Five right? years, and I don't get a damn greeting at the door. He'll be here. Five years. And where is Mark? <laughs> All this way. Five hours. But I don't want to make you guys wait any longer. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, put your seat. <laughs> this is awesome. This is my first reveal. It looks awesome. It's going to be awesome. Look who's the dream maker now. We're ready. Okay. Come on. So we're going to, it's really dark, so. OK, come on. Hold Will's hand. Don't you're hold my hand. I'll hold it's Will's really hand. Really dark. What? <laughs> what? Oh, man, you guys, this is like blacked out. I know. We wanted to, okay. we really want to play this up for you pretty big. Car's been here a long time, but it's worth it. I'm assuming he's gonna show up at some point today. <laughs> so come Holy over cow. here. I mean, good. I think I'm walking right. You're doing good right I now. I think I'm gonna Why walk into a camp. Why are you holding this hand, Will? I, I, I'm, I'm right, right, right here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. I, might grab you. I don't know what it takes to make a TV show. You know, I have no clue. I just watch the end result. Uh, but doing it when it's dark, and asking our camera crew to film in the dark doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we'll just have to wait and see how the episode comes out. Okay, you're okay. doing good. I don't know okay, where come we're over here. Headed, right? But... Okay, so we got the car. I know you can't see it, but it's I right here in the middle. I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> no. All right, are you guys ready? Uh, we're Thank ready. And I'm gonna have the display lights come on, okay, Jeffrey? Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Graveyard Cars has just received one of the rarest Chrysler muscle cars ever made anywhere, anytime. 
1970 Dodge Coronet RT 426 Hemi four-speed convertible. They built two of them. You're looking at one. 1970 Hemi Coronet RT convertible is getting disassembled. You're talking about a car that has the wildest engine available, probably the wildest color available. It's a convertible top, it's a four speed, it's a super track pack car, and it really is an early version story of a car that was dead in a junkyard, forgotten and left to die, that came back to life because of somebody like myself two or three decades ago. Now it's just getting freshened up. This car is without a doubt, probably the most collectible car on the planet next to the 71 Hemi Cuda convertible. So the car was abandoned and found in a Canadian junkyard back in the 70s. Oh, really? Motor and transmission were gone to it. But back then, there was a few guys that knew Mopars, right? Not everybody like today because of the internet, but back then. Uh-huh. He looks at the VIN number on the fender tag, says, oh, <laughs> oh 70 Hemi Cuda. Yeah, looks at the registry. There's none registered. Goes and figures out that it's one of two made and he starts building the car back together. The 70 Coronet convertible is one of only two RTs with a Hemi. That means we gotta be on our A-game. We're reusing a lot of these parts, so everything has to be inventoried and taken good care of. In 1973, this car came with an electronic ignition and an optional sliding metal sunroof on two-door models. The Sport model had an optional utility package that when the rear seats folded down, provided six and a half feet of carpeted cargo area. This car featured simulated wood grain door trim panels, two speed wipers, front armrests, and a heater defroster, which was pretty cool. And due to complaints, they renamed the Dodge Demon to the Dart Sport, making it our corpse of the week. We're knee deep on the disassembly of the Hemi Coronet convertible. Remember, that is a seven figure car, so everything's going good now, but it needs to continue to go good. The, the little short history on this is uh, Brett Torino had it, had bought the car, I don't know when, and I certainly don't know for how much, but it's an expensive car to put in this collection because he only collects the best of the best. Um, and they went out to start it a couple of years ago and it dropped its oil pressure and uh, started to make a uh, knocking noise. So, and it, they thought that it was a spun bearing. So that's when they reached out to me and said, well, listen, it's got a dent in the fender. It's got some updates that need to be done to it. Let's just send it up to market graveyard cars. You know, walking around the car and looking at it, I had no reason to believe that there were any real hidden sins underneath it. I had every reason to believe that it was gonna be a very, very nice, solid, original metal underneath that paint. After taking our time and getting it completely disassembled and everything bagged and where it was supposed to be, it was time to send it off and have it dipped. Truly, it wasn't until we got the car back and setting in the shop it bare, raw, that we could see all of the previous sins. It wasn't that somebody did a bad job. It was they did all that they could do with what they had when the car was built so many years ago. The quarter panels that were on the car were replacement quarter panels that were put on over the top of the originals. Now, I don't mean all the way down that they just stuck it on, but instead of seaming it at all of the openings, like the roof opening and the door openings, they just stuck it over the top and filled it with mud. So when we took the quarters back off so we could install them correctly, that's when we had to fix all the little problems on it. There was a section of rocker that was destroyed and they don't make that rocker, 70 Coronet. Nobody makes that, not rocker, but the quarter panel itself. Nobody makes that. So Brett came out to take delivery of his 1967 GTX. This is the convertible blue, white top, blue interior four speed car. Very, very rare car. One of his favorites of all time. So while Brett was here, he wanted to check out the Coronet, the convertible. So we went out back, we have it underneath our shelter area. It was covered up with a car cover. Uh, he spent some time looking at it. I had to show him some of the things that we were dealing with, some of the things that I anticipated. Uh, but you know, rather than being upset that we're frankly a couple years behind, I know everybody that has a car here knows we're at least a couple years behind. Yeah, it, he was really uh, receptive to all the things I talked about on the car and I think uh, appeased with where we're at on the car at this time. In the booth, we have Brett Torino's 1970 convertible Hemi Cornet, one of two. Uh, owner's been patient, but it's time to get it done, and uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, so this, this color wasn't very popular, so when I tried to get the color, I called PPG. They didn't remake it because it wasn't a popular color. Um, so what I had to do is just find a color that was close, which I did, and they just tinted to match, and that's where we're at now. Every time we get one of these cars done, you know, it's a great feeling. They're rare cars, they're high dollar cars, and uh, it's very rewarding when these cars are out there and people say, hey, Will Scott from Graveyard Cars did this car, and they look amazing. 
Careful. Good. Okay, so nice. I just finished the cut and buff on Trino 70 Cornet. That looks good, William. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So now that this, the body's all wrapped up, uh, I'll head to the booth. I got all the, the hood, deck lid, all the parts and pieces to get done. And like I said, the car came out sharp, and I can't wait to see it all done. Painted them, came out great, got them buffed to perfection, and now we're going to put them on. So it's mainly just go over there, bolt them on, a little tweak here or there, and they fall right into place. Actually, it's not bad right where it's at on my side. Keep going. Cool, color matches, we're, we're done. You know, those are a really cool grill. Uh, now on the Coronet RT, it has that red band that also goes with it. So we had to redo all of that stuff. We had to do the paint. The Argent Silver paint had to do the red on it, but it was a very nice one to start with. Uh, the chrome bumper, it was beautiful, so we didn't have to replay it. And that was one of Brett's questions was, can we save some of the originality of it? And we were able to do it with that. Uh, one of the other big bruises on this car when we first took it in was the convertible top. The material itself was the wrong material. Somebody, when they had done the restoration on it, put the 67 and earlier style, they call it a pinpoint. It's literally like that, the little points of a pin would come up. So it's real gritty when you run your hand across it. The last year for that type of material was 1967. 1968 and on up, they used the crush style. So we had to replace that. In the process of replacing that, you want to do the mechanism, very important. So uh, we got it hanging up there. I went through, sanded it out, fixed a couple of dings. And like I said, it was really nice to begin with. Uh, painted it black, and then I clear coated it with a semi-flat clear. Now that it's all painted and 100% dry, I'm going to roll it back so we can get going. So we hit our benchmarks with the convertible top and having the bumper assembly and stuff like that put on the car. So it's at a point now where we can put our front suspension, rear suspension, start putting that car together from a drivetrain standpoint. All right, let's move that bad boy in. Very nice, okay. In the past, we've had a lot of help on these cars. Sometimes it's good. Some former employees, it's real annoying. Right now, I've got a great team and I enjoy working with them. So this is one stress level that I'm not having to deal with like I did in the past. Good, going smooth so far, almost out of the woods here. Beautiful. Nice work, guys. Okay, our shocks are in place. Right now, we're gonna move to the front, we're gonna get the engine and the transmission loaded up in front of the car. Let's roll in. So steer it best you can underneath. Once we get it under there, we'll go ahead and Reset. Okay, let me get an eyeball in the center here. So, when it comes to the RB engines and, and the 426 Hemi, the Elephant, it's a tight squeeze in these cars. So, you have to be careful. You have to orchestrate every move. Make sure that somebody's watching both inner fenders so that the valve covers or the exhaust manifolds don't hit the aprons or hit the power steering uh, or have the power steering pump actually hit the apron. Something's going to hit somewhere. So, you have to have a lot of eyes on it and be very careful. So, it's never been easy in the past. It's no easier now. Pretty close. We did it. Great. If you watched down through that <laughs> tunnel that I was looking through, through the grill, it was within a couple of millimeters, maybe, of hitting on each side. But good job. All right. So let's align that thing and put the bolts in it. Okay. How much cargo space did the optional utility package available on the 73 Dart Sport offer? Was it five feet, six feet, or none of the above? We'll have your answer after the break. So, how much cargo space did the optional utility package available for the Dart Sport offer? If you said none of the above, you were right. It actually provided six and a half feet of carpeted cargo room, and that's with the security panel and rear seat folded down. I'm excited to announce that we're getting really close on our Coronet. So this is our 70 Coronet RT, 426 Hemi, four-speed convertible. Now remember, this is the only one left on the planet like it. 
We've got the build almost done. We're down to installing the dash and the rest of the interior. And then Larry is out today installing the top. So we're all gonna be working on it at certain times together. You know, I always love it when Royal takes time to get over here and help us out. I mean, he's a great technician. I've worked with him forever. He knows what he's doing. He's the, one of those few guys that I don't have to uh, direct as we're going along. He already knows what to do. If I just step back and let him do his job, things work smoothly. I love the guy, I grew up with him, right? And so having him over here working on anything, whether it's in the show or whether we're just working on cars together like old buddies on a Saturday and nobody's around, it's just, it's good times, good memories for me. So right now the guys are just making the connections underneath the dash, the ones that are really easy. They're putting the cables and everything in. They're connecting the defroster vents. Uh, Royal, you can go ahead and put that connection right there for the heater. That, get my hand out of the way. Lift up. Nice work, gentlemen. Five. That's how it's supposed to go. Good work, Rooster. <laughs> well, you're just a crazy man. You will I ride? Yeah. <laughs> There are certain things that you just really enjoy the hell out of. And something like that that's in place that's that beautiful, you enjoy it. You just have to. If you don't, something's wrong with you. It's like Dougie. I think something's wrong with Dougie. I, you know. So. so it's time to put the white bumblebee stripe on the coronet. Uh, I'm gonna have Alyssa help me. I doubt very much that she'll do a whole lot of hands-on stuff, but every single time she helps me and she sees the process, and then sooner or later that will rub off on her. So when she's ready to do her very first decal on her own, she'll remember all those hurdles that I had to go through and, and know that I wasn't just doing it for the exercise, every single thing mattered. You wanna make sure that the side marker opening is right in the center of the decal. The problem is if, if you put that center deck lid on that decal first and its, and its trajectory is off just a hair, when you go to put the quarter panel one on, it won't yeah, be centered with the opening. So you've got to put it centered with the opening perfectly, go do the other side centered with it perfectly, then you put the center one on. The only thing is right now we're trying to beat the heat. We're having 100 degree days here. So the speed in which I have to move putting this decal on is, is fast. And you ha when you're doing fast, you know, you always take a chance of damaging something. So just be diligent, work hard, work fast on it. Make sure that you get everything squeegeed out in that first pass. So if there's an air bubble in there, the way that solution kicks off, that air bubble will be trapped. And you can, you can deal with a few little air bubbles, but if it's very many at all, you're taking the decal off, calling Phoenix Graphics, doing it again. We are in the position to make sure that the decals are installed and oriented correctly. They didn't have the luxury of time back then. They were putting out a lot of cars. So in this particular case, yes, our restoration work is better than the factory, more accurate than the factory. Fantastic job, by the way. Oh, thank you. Now that's the way it's supposed to go, right? She paid attention, she was focused, she did her job right, and it pushed us near the line where we need to be. So time is running out, but, but in reality, it's just good to have something like that under our belt. So we're getting really close to wrapping up our Hemi Coronet RT. All we have left is the back seat interior upholstery. Basically, that's the garnish molding that covers the power steering uh, pump assembly. Then you have your quarter interior trim panels, your seats. Once you do that, we're gonna move forward with a console, bucket seats, sill plate moldings, and we'll be wrapped up on that thing. They are putting this upper garnish molding. This actually holds the tonneau cover in place at the front. Okay, so this is our courtesy light. It snaps into the plastic. In some cases, like the interior quarter trim panels, they're 50 years old, they're brittle, right? Like us, we get a hole, we get brittle. So if the technician runs the screw in too far or has the wrong screw and it goes in too far, it doesn't have the shoulder stop on it, you crack it out. Now you've just ruined maybe a thousand or $2,000 trim panel. That's All beautiful. Right, looking good. Just like, like that. that. So now they're putting the center console in. Awesome. And just like that. All right, now we're ready to go on to the seats. So they're gonna finish up the seats, top off all the fluid levels, get the battery charging on it. Just after that, we'll start it up outside. If it runs and it does what it's supposed to, we're going on a road test and a road test. The 
It's October 1969. You've been saving your money for a brand new car. You're at Eugene Dodge. On the showroom is this beautiful, all new, 1970 Dodge Challenger. It has a 446 pack, a four speed transmission, a 410 Super Track pack. It's painted beautiful B7 blue, B5 interior with a white bumblebee. On the other side of the showroom is a gorgeous 1970 Dodge Coronet RT convertible. It features a 426 Hemi that puts out 425 horsepower. It's a four speed transmission, 410 Super Track Pack. Which of these two cars would you lay your cash down for in 1969? Go to graveyardcars.com and cast your vote. We will announce which car got chosen next week live on Facebook. Don't forget to tip the salesman too. It's not a real cigar, just method acting. So far, We've witnessed the arrival and restoration of the most valuable car to ever darken the graveyard gates. The ultra rare, one of two, and only surviving 1970 Hemi Coronet RT four speed convertible. Still to come, with a majority of the restoration complete, Mark and Royal are ready to take this seven figure car on its first road test. And Brett Torino is anxiously awaiting the reveal. But that's not all. Mark still has to take the Little Dead Wagon for a not-to-be-missed road test. So everything's going great. Uh, other than the wheel alignment and some last-minute checkoff stuff, few assembly line markings, really, the car's done. Royal's still here, thank goodness. I want to go for a ride with him. I want to see that wind ripping through his hair. You know, on a convertible, well, obviously that can't happen. What I mean to say is I want to see him, the joy of the sun beating down on that bald bean of his. Chrome dome. That's what I call him. He's my friend. Like a great big toe stuck on his shoulders. We're getting ready to do the initial fire off of it. I don't anticipate any problems. All right, let's see what we got, boss. Fire it up. All right. Ow. Sounds good. I'm gonna let it warm up. Drop the top. Drop the, the top, top down. Yeah. God, it's even idling nice. How about that? Let's see if the power windows work. Look at that, roll O. <laughs> Let's try the door. All work and roll out. Nice. Are we ready? <laughs> yeah. There it is. Oh, that sound, that feels good. Feels solid, brakes. That feels good, yeah. Brakes are good. Doug's been doing a great job. Doug's got those things dialed in. Oh, Look really? at that. That thing shifts like butter. Listen to that. No whining, no howling, no growling, no nothing. Everything just is solid. It just feels car. solid, doesn't it? Listen to that first gear. Wow. Tracks nice. Look at the steering. Pretty good for a first time guess. So on the Coronet, it really is a joy to drive. It hasn't even been aligned. But when you talk about the engine, runs beautiful. Scott Smith did a beautiful job rebuilding those carburetors. Those are difficult carburetors to make right. That engine runs beautiful. Everything looks like it should, runs like it should. Pass on performance, they did the transmission for us, shifts like butter, absolutely. And a lot of them don't, especially getting to the Hemi four speeds, they're a bit of a clunker. This thing really shifted nice. Everything on the car, run, drove, tracked, shifted, sounds beautiful. It's a over-the-counter replacement block, there's no VIN on it. It's a 1972 over-the-counter replacement Hemi, which is good. Compared, you know, I mean, perfect would have been the original engine in it, but it uh -huh. doesn't work that way, right? Uh, but it had that one in it, and uh, we sent it out and had it built, put it back together again, and boy, it sure feels good. That sounds good. Oh, I love God, that. that's that dual force, man. Oh. Nothing like it. Boy, that just feels good right there. It like, does. usually you let the clutch out and all kinds of weird things happen. But boy, that track's nice. 
I think Brett will love the car for a multitude Absolutely. of reasons. It's a gorgeous car, it's stunning color, it's right. We matched it against an original panel, so we know we've got the right color. The body in the paint is as good as you can do on a car, so, you know, I'm not bragging, I'm just saying it's as good as you can do on a car. Those are 410 gears, and it feels like it would pull for a long time. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is like the old days, except we never had anything this cool. <laughs> no. What was well, the coolest we car we, we had as kids? Every car we had was cool. I know. So. Right. You know, for just first putting the car together, we haven't even had the alignment done on it. I mean, that was like, I just wanted to ride around with Royal, so it wasn't quite ready to go driving, but boy, you wouldn't know it to drive it. Everything on the car worked. Turn signal indicator, speedometer, tachometer, all the gauges. It tracked down the road straight. Steering wheel needs to be centered when it gets aligned, but I was pretty impressed with how nice that drove. Yeah, it's solid. Everything, there's no rattles. For a first time put together in an initial road test, Usually there's some rattles you gotta go back and fix, but not, not this one. I'm relaxed now. No one Brett's coming. I'm okay with that. I you know, you play your cards right, you might get to buy me dinner. I had been buying you dinner since 1976. That's not true, Marcus. No, it is Gregory true, Royal Roman. Galen Yoakum. No, it's not. It's most certainly true. When I first met you, we were on the paper route. You said you needed more space, so you quit your paper route. I took it over. We were walking by 7-Eleven. You said, hey, more buddy, space? did you buy me a hot, buy dog? Me hot dog? No, it was a big one. I got write-offs there. Nothing ever ends. You didn't, you didn't change nothing. I got more things change, and more they stay the same. Hey, ghouls! True or false? The 1973 Dart sedan came with an optional sliding metal sunroof. We'll have your answer after the break. <laughs> Moment of truth, guys. To the 1973 Dart sedan come with an optional sliding metal sunroof. If you were paying close attention to our Corpse of the Week, I already told you, you know that the sunroof was only available for the two-door models. The sedan is a four-door model. I'll let this one slide, but next time, you guys better be paying attention. <laughs> Alyssa worked with me a couple of times in the past on doing assembly line markings and information labels. Uh, we got our packet a couple weeks ago from ECS. They're the ones that are making the door VIN label, as well as all the other information labels and replica part number labels. So that'll be a good experience for Alyssa to have. She's worked with me on the markings before, but she hasn't necessarily done it on a 1970B body with a 426 Hemi. So we're gonna work together on that. That's gonna be one of the last things that car needs. We're gonna start with the rear axle. So we actually need to flip through to 13-9-28. So the first, we can start just where he does. We can go with the numbers first. So here's a zero, here's an eight, and there's a four. Okay, and then we need it in yellow ink. It does look like it's in yellow ink, which is this yellow right here. So what we try to do is our best experience at what gets actually the assembly line markings themselves and what colors they are. That there are people out there at home, I'm sure, that have done this, that know a lot about the card and say, oh no, I got a 1970 Survivor Super B and it didn't have white, it had yellow. That's possible. But in this particular case, we've done our best research to be able to emulate the assembly line markings. Here we go. That zero though. No, it looks <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, give me a <laughs> Better than anything you could do. All right. You'll look at all the Danas. They've got this on every one of the Danas and the eight and three quarters as well. It's just an X. Kind of like that. And the other half of the X, something like that. And then it usually has a circle around it. Okay, done. So once we get all the assembly line markings done, we'll let it down, we'll put on the instructional decals and labels, and then it'll be ready for Brett. So we're just gonna put a, a daub right there, then a little something there. Do a daub. A little mark right there. That's good. Inconsistent, not too much. It's not. They weren't artists on the line. They were just blasting that thing.
Okay, so we have all of the assembly line markings done. I'd like to say very good job. Thank you. We didn't even fight very much. Not too much insulting going on there. That's a good thing. Only problem is I'm colorblind. So I had to have her tell me which one's the green and the red and brown and stuff like that. But hopefully you didn't pull anything on me. No, I wouldn't do those that. Those are actually the colors because I hate to see Mr. Torino have to fly up here and stomp a mud hole in your back and walk it dry. He would never do that because no, he's he such wouldn't. a nice guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> no, but he might be. I love Brett. He's awesome people. Okay. We're going to be putting the information labels on next. These are the labels that the manufacturer put on them that let you know what the curb idle, the air fuel mixture would be on the engine itself. The door VIN label. So some more fun. I am ready, aim, cool. fire. We're going to start with the door VIN label. Okay. See how it fits here. If we wanted to put it right there, how does that fit? Good. Fits nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. we'll pull the back off. And that is how you do that. Voila. I want to be able to drop the convertible top down okay. and be able to put the rest of the labels on. But first, we have to put the warning label that goes on the header. So go ahead and get in the passenger side. Okay, get that out of the way. There. So that label goes right here. Go ahead and set it up there. Not your hand, the label. I'll have the label. Well, get the label. We need the label. I know, but you didn't tell it. So I think that everything went great. I think you did a good job. You learned. Thank you. This is like your third or fourth one now, so you should be getting it down. Someday the old man's not going to be here, and you're going to have to do this stuff on your own. That's not true. Not everybody lives forever, my friend. Once no, I, I you know, This is sad. This is taking a turn. All right, so let's go back to... To happy. So happy you is we have more cars that we need to do assembly line markings for. Yes. So you need to get out the 1968 B-Body book and the 1970 E-Body book and the other 1970 e-body book because we have lots of stuff to do. Okay. Assembly line markings, we bring them back. We don't just bring them back, we bring them back right. So this is D-Day. Uh, Brett and his girlfriend are coming up to check out the 1970 Dodge Coronet. He's been waiting a little while on that car. So this is a really cool reveal I have planned for him. Uh, one of the things I have to do is go across town. Holly ended up sending me the replacement fuel pump. If you remember when we were down at SEMA, somebody left the switch on, burned up our fuel pump. Well, I got the new one, but we've lost amazingly the connections for it. So I got to go across town and pick up all the couplings. I'm going to go do that. We should end up showing up here at the same time, but if he shows up early, I want Alyssa to spend a little bit of time just kind of schmoozing him, keep him out of the shop. So when I get back, we can do the big reveal. What did you do on the car? I did all the prep work. You did nothing. Oh, that's right. You did. I, did. I yeah. did. Remember, that's when I was out there. Look who's oh, there. Come on. Okay, let's go. My dad's not back. It's fine. You know, Mark's out of the shop right now, so Alyssa wanted to go ahead and just take over the reveal and do it herself. Whatever. Not that big of a deal. I kind of get where it's funny. Yeah, Where's the big guy? That's yeah, right. The big guy? Big he, guy. Okay, so my dad had to run across town really quick. Uh -huh. uh, I think he had to no grab way. a part or something, but that's okay. We don't have to come wait for on. him. We don't have to wait for him. We can go out. You guys have waited long enough, Five right? Five years, and I don't get a damn greeting at the door. He'll be here. Five years. And where is Mark? <laughs> All this way. Five hours. But I don't want to make you guys wait any longer. Can let's, we? Yeah, let's yeah, go check it out. <laughs> this is awesome. This is my first reveal. It looks awesome. It's going to be awesome. Look who's the dream maker now. Nice. We're ready. Yeah, you okay. want. So we're going to, it's really dark, so. Okay, come on. Hold Will's hand. Don't even hold my hand. I'll hold really Will's dark. hand. Really dark. What? What? Oh man, you guys, this is like blacked out. I know. We wanted to, we would want to play this up for you pretty big. Car's been here a long time, but it's worth it. I'm assuming he's going to show up at some point today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Holy over cow! Here. Okay, I, think I mean, we're good. I think I'm walking right. You're doing good right I now. I think I'm going to walk are you into holding a his hand, I, I, I'm, I'm right, 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 right here. here. <laughs> I don't know what it takes to make a TV show. You know, I have no clue. I just watch the end result. Uh, but doing it when it's dark 
and asking our camera crew to film in the dark doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we'll just have to wait and see how the episode comes out. Okay, you're okay. doing good. I don't know okay, where we're headed, right? But... Okay, so we got the car. I know you can't see it, but it's I right here in the middle. I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> oh. All right, are you guys ready? Ah, we're Thank ready. You. I'm gonna have the display lights come on, okay, Jeffrey? Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. What the? <laughs> I knew what was going on. I sensed it. That's what you do at this level in life. You sense things. If she thinks for a second that she's gonna beat me out of that reveal, take my glory, steal the thunder, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, oh God. really? Yeah, I thought you gotta get one by the old man, didn't you? Yeah, that's what you thought. You gotta get up earlier than that if you're gonna trick the ice man. You know what I'm saying? The ice cube, the ice tray, ice shavings, cube ice, icy hot. Stuff you put on and it's real, uh, like, cold when it goes on, it's icy, and then it gets real hot. What's your question again now? <laughs> you you get to look real. Brother, I'm still a man. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to miss this. Thanks, Dad. Always got to come in and steal my thunder. Thanks. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I had to do it. OK. Uh, you know I'm a showman. OK. Uh, I love it. Hey, can we actually do this? We're going to turn display lights on. Whoa. Wow, wow. Is that beautiful? Oh, that is going. It looks like it's just floating. I just love those red lights. That is. And the real tease is you cannot see the body and the paint yet on it. You can't oh, see how yeah. gorgeous it is. Mark, this is this yeah. a heck of a display. Look under there. That's the whole bottom of your car. We got yeah, we no, I, hiding I, nothing. I love the original primer, nickel cadmium bulk, but that's it. We're just getting started. All right, light guys, are you on standby? We got a beautiful car to show this guy. On zero, three, two, one, zero. Yes! Look at that! Wow! It's gorgeous. Mark, this thing is oh, Take it all in. Stunning. The shine, the fit, the finish. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm really <laughs> stunned. You know, I don't I, I can't race through it. I'm just it's okay. Take your time. At Take it. it in. I haven't even seen around. <laughs> You've seen the nothing. Car yet. I know, no. I just want I, I I had to show yeah. you that. I had to show you. You know, it's sometimes difficult to translate from when you're here to television, yeah. just how beautiful these things look. I mean, but the, the, this car is gorgeous, Mark, and the thing that I love about it, and you and I have done a few cars together yeah. now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is you get it correct. I'm blown away, I love it. You just, it's hard to appreciate the beauty of this. Maybe I'm in, you know, I have a certain fondness to it, but. To see it again after all this time is, it's a, it's, it's an emotional thing. I'm very happy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. No, it's, I can't wait to see under the hood. Yeah, we'll there, but <laughs> I think this car, when you look at the features of it, they're truly bold. I mean, it's not something that the lines flow and you have this perfect symmetry and this is a very unusual looking car. It was bold for somebody to design that. And the fact that somebody was willing to bless this car when it was designed at some point and go with it, you know, that's what I appreciate about it. I look at it and it's, it's unique, especially for American muscle. This is just stunning. Mark. Every single thing is exactly the way it appeared in 1970 when it rolled off the assembly line. You look at these, especially, you know, collecting cars a long time, there's nothing like these Hemi motors. It's They're a work just... of art. I mean, the outside of the car is one thing, but look at, there is no room. But when you see it in there, you think, wow. Yeah, it's got to be a bear putting this thing in. It I, I is can't beyond a bear putting it in there, yes. So when you look back to the beginning of the season and you look now and you realize that this is the last reveal we'll do this season, it takes a lot to get where we're at. We did some really great cars this year and each one of them takes its own amount of time. 
So when I look back and I see the Charger, the 68 Charger, really cool car, or the Duster, the cool first ever Graveyard Dreams Duster. And while we were doing all of that, we got this car done and we got it done right and we made no compromises. Don't forget our little dead wagon, because that was a big project too. That's what we do at Graveyard Cars. What did you think? I loved it. Yeah? What's her not you. to love? It's a gorgeous car. Oh my God, you know, it's, I, I gotta tell you, I, I, this I love, I, I, yeah. I love it so much. But when I look around your shop, every one of these cars, uh, you know, it, it, it makes you understand why you do this. Brett's a diehard Mopar guy, has yeah. been probably since he had air in his lungs. One thing that you'll notice is Brett has not driven his car yet. We're in Oregon, and it is not nice weather outside. Well, we're not going to take our brand no, new, God, I wish so. beautiful seven-figure Coronet RT convertible out in the rain. I think until Brett sits behind the wheel of 425 horses and puts his foot to the wood, he can't quite fully appreciate everything about that car. I love it, Mark. Thank you for coming up. I love you, brother. You're a good guy. Yeah, me too. Brett Torino right there. This has been a pleasure. <laughs>